Uh, I'm Vidya Srinivasan. I uh, head up the solution marketing for digital service and operations management. Um, how many of you were at the keynote and heard the announcement? Yeah? Was it exciting? Are you all happy about so convergence of ITSM and ITOM? Um, so I'm really curious to find out what you guys shared as part of the poll. So thank you. We'll find out soon. Um, and I'm going to kind of walk you through the double click from what you heard today, right? So what the portfolio looks like, what the capabilities are, um, and most importantly, what it means for you, right, on a day-to-day -day basis, right? We are all users, we are all playing different personas in real life within IT. So I want to kind of share a real-life use case, a day in the life of, and how all of this comes together, and what it makes, you know, what it means to you. Um, and then I have the pleasure of um, uh, Trung uh, from Videotron joining us. Um, so he'll kind of share how they are leveraging the BMC technologies to drive their optimization in IT. It's just kind of weird hearing this because I can hear myself speak. So with that, nobody took the poll? Seriously? It doesn't work? Oh. The code doesn't work? Ha. Huh. Okay. Well, raise of hand. We'll go back to a manual process for a second. How many people in the audience use both ITSM and ITOM products? Okay, fair, fairly good audience. Okay, um, we'll get to this. So I'm going to start with the day in the life of, right? So quickly walk through it. End users, we are all end users in our company, uh, and we all have requests on a day-to-day -day basis, right? And then you have agents, right? A service desk, uh, we send requests, right? Whether it's IT requests, HR requests, whatever it might be. I'm going to choose to play um, a non-IT request just for the fun of it because, you know, it's, it's, it's just done deal, right? Like everybody has an IT request. So I'm going to say I need to travel to China and I need a visa, right? And all of us have some kinds of requests, but I'm going to use this example. And as part of that, what happens is, you know, I, my IT request, or sorry, <laughs> just practice, uh, request goes to an HR service desk where that request gets sent and the HR agent picks it up. And I sit there thinking, what happened to my visa application? When am I going to get the request? I need to travel in a couple of weeks. I still don't have it. And I found out that you know, my email is, for some reason, I've not received any emails from, from, from that. So there seems to be an issue, right? So there's no email confirmation of the ticket being sent, request being sent. And then what happens is on the op side, you see there's a huge wall, just like we have here, <laughs> looks like, uh, between the ITSM, the service desk, and the operations folks, right? So there seems to be an outage. So the, these are happening in silos today, right? Uh, there's an outage. Users are not getting tickets, right? And it kind of goes off, right? So eventually, at some point, they decide to open a ticket. The servers are down. I'm still waiting for the team to close the service, right? So what happens here is there are two separate silos kind of working, right? Um, separately, the service desk has no clue that there was something that triggered an email issue or email server issue, and there was a ticket open. They're just working in vacuum, right? At some point, they make the connection, but it's too late. So what happens is, you know, we are working on things that are not prioritized. We are working on things without knowing the, there's something else happening that's causing the other issue. And then, you know, at the end of the day, we as employees or customers are paying the price for it, right? Who knows? I probably never received my visa and I had to cancel my China trip, right? So it's very much, you know, you can, you can take this use case, you can apply other use cases, but this happens on a day-to-day -day basis. I was going to add, do another poll, but given my code is not working, I'm going to ask how many people face this kinds of issue today within, within your organizations? 
Do you all have separate teams dealing with these issues? So, let's skip, because <laughs> that's not going to work. So, the, the, when you think about the traditional challenges, right, is no collaboration, no context as to what, what or when the event occurs that's causing the, the, causing the issue. There is, you know, when we look at the amount of time and cost we spend, right, there's no visibility into it. Right? There is no visibility of what servers exist, how they are related, what the business dependencies are. None of that exists today. So really understanding some of these issues, I think going back to the keynote, right? really knowing, turning the unknowns to the knowns is where the convergence of ITSM and ITOM comes together. So we, we got an opportunity to talk to some of you folks over you know, the past, uh, past month. And these were some of the nuggets that, you know, uh, hopefully it resonates with you as well, right? So there was things around operating and managing cost and people, right? So at the end of the day, we, as IT, I think we mentioned today, cost is, is a non-stop, right? We always worry about cost. How do we optimize it? How much do we spend? How many people do we need? And we end up with, oh, we need to cut people to save, right, save money. So it's a big part of the challenge. And then, you know, the other part here is also people saying, hey, we work with BMC, we kind of use different things across these various portfolio. We trust BMC to help us see the corners, right? See around the corners and tell us what's wrong, what's broken, what do I have, how much I spend. So it's a big part of what we are hearing. And then, you know, you can also look at, um, you know, People want to kind of become a leaner organization, optimizing operations, um, so and also figuring out how it all comes together, right? So uh, I'm sure within organizations today we have tons of dashboards, right? It, it's not something that you can look at a performance dashboard. You can look at a service desk. You know, there's various dashboards. So at a you know kind of going back to the keynote, what Nayaki was saying, going from a basement to the boardroom. Right? So you as IT leaders, how are you enabled to provide that holistic view to be able to see what's happening within the organization? Right? So that's a big part of what you are saying to us and you know, we're working to make that, those issues go away with the convergence of ITSM and ITOM. So hence, we, um, the five key offerings of the pillar. So now let's go into each of them and see how they relate. So discovery, right? Uh, discovery is a big part of the foundation. So as, as we heard earlier today, without discovery, there's no way anybody can possibly know what's happening, right? If you don't know what you have, how are you going to manage it? How are you going to secure it? How are you going to optimize it, right? How are you going to deliver the experience that customers need? So that's a big foundation. And as we think about the corners, it's a perfect analogy, right? Being able to know what's going to happen. If you don't know what you have, it's not going to happen, right? So this is a big part, and we have some great customers um, that leverage discovery today. Um, obviously, it's something that we have a deeper session as part of discovery today, and you will hear a customer uh, speak to it as well. So please do stay tuned for that session. We have Monitor. Um, as part of our monitoring solution, as part of Helix, we are really evolving that portfolio to move from on-prem to SaaS as part of the Helix platform. And our goal is to make sure that as you, pro as you discover your assets, we can proactively and predictively monitor those assets, right? Know the events, proactively alert, and tie it to the business applications that are critical for your customers, right? So you can serve them better in a, in a better fashion. So that's a big part of what we are leveraging, you know, especially AI ops. You think about AI ops. It's a big part of what feeds into and powers, um, will be powering our Helix monitor solution. And then you have service, right? Service, not just for IT. I know we all have ITSM um, and uh, use Helix or Remedy on-prem um, today. Uh, but we also have business workflows, which is part of our business service desk solution, business workflow solution that we provide today. So hence the example of an HR application, right? We want to make sure that we as uh, BMC can provide value to your entire organization, not just your IT organization, but 
provide a great service experience to your employees, to your customers, right? Um, and make sure that you are able to serve and deliver that service through a single pane of glass. So that's, that's, uh, that's the foundation of what ITSM and the lines of business provides. And then you think about remediate. We want to make sure that when, you, when these issues do occur, you, know, you, you deliver that service um, in a secure fashion. So having the ability to proactively um, detect the vulnerabilities, your blind spots, and be able to apply the right patches or to remediate that situation is a big part. Right? So you, today, at the keynote, you saw the cloud security piece. Right? So it's a big part of identifying what those, what those things are as a request comes in and being able to make that connections and being able to remediate, not just remediate after the fact, but being able to proactively remediate it. Uh, thinking about policies, compliance, audits, governance, right? There's tons of things that you need to think about. Um, so that's where we come in with our remediate offering to tell you how you could do it, right? Be aware of it even before something shows up or as a high priority issue. So that's where remediate comes in. And then optimize. Um, as you think about your capacity, right? Especially as you're moving from cloud to on or on-prem to the cloud going the wrong direction. Especially as you're going from on-prem to the cloud, uh, you have assets, right, that are probably sitting there. You don't know what you're using. You may not have full visibility of the capacity utilization. How can you help, you know, drive optimization, right? And that's where capacity comes in, where you can apply artificial AI and machine learning to help detect and forecast um, what you need to spend, how do you optimize your infrastructure, right? Uh, really help you manage that in a better fashion. So we have some specific tracks later today where uh, we will go into this and we have a customer speaking about how they leverage our capacity uh, solution um, to do this. So it's really about thinking about how you could leverage your discovery capability along with, you know, once you have discovered the assets, how can you effectively optimize the utilization of your assets um, and as well as you know your spend and how you can optimize the spend and forecast the spend as you go forward uh, for your organization. So it's a big part of how this all comes together. Um, and you know, to wrap it all up, it's the experience, right? So when you can effectively, uh, proactively discover your assets, you can monitor the, the, issue, monitor the events, alerts, um, be able to remediate and service those through a great experience, right, an omni-channel experience that all comes together through digital workplace. Um, so that's the single pane of glass that your employees can leverage. Um, so when you think about the omni-channel experience, we have five key channels that we support through, um, through our chatbots. Uh, we have Slack, we have uh, Skype, we have the, you know, the mobile um, aspects as well. Uh, but then, you know, most importantly, we've kind of added um, other channels, WhatsApp and others that are coming up um, as well. So really thinking about you know, how you could leverage the omnichannel experience for your organization is a big part of uh, what you can leverage today from Helix. All of this powered by our platform uh, that you can use uh, to extend, configure, or customize your applications, right? So if you're using our business business workflows capability, you don't you can simply you know tailor your existing applications without having to customize it. So there's no code, low code capabilities for business users uh, that can leverage that today, um, as well as if you're an IT person and wants to you know, customize your applications. That's something that's available as our platform as well. So the beauty of the platform is today as you as, you know, hybrid natives or hybrid uh, users of, of our applications, some on-prem, some in the cloud, you can leverage all the offerings, all the solutions in our portfolio in a hybrid model as well. It doesn't all have to be in the cloud. We realize everybody is, is in, in the context of a, you know, hybrid situation. Um, and through the platform, you can actually leverage it in a hybrid model. So you can have your ITSM on-prem, you can have digital workplace in the cloud, either or works. So that's the flexibility and modularity of what the platform provides for you. So now let's look at how it all fits in, right? We talked about the other day in the life of. So here you can see 
So what happens here is you're actually leveraging the digital workplace to request, to make that request of the visa, right? That goes to business workflows, where you actually get the request to the HR service desk agent. And in the world of Helix, you, you, know, you don't have to wait for the issue to be triggered by the user. You are proactively monitoring issues or alerts, uh, or the various business applications. So you're gonna find the issue with the email server before the user has to report it, right? So that's the, that's the beauty of Helix. Um, and then, you know, through discovery, know how it's mapped, what the servers are, how it's mapped to the business service, uh, which is the email server. Um, and then proactively open the ticket and notify the users, right? Notify the users that there is an outage. So be aware. So, you know, so they don't have to like wait for a couple of days before they open a ticket and, and have the, you know, the post reactive um, servicing. So this is how, and then we identify that there is an issue uh, that needs to be remediated. So we apply the patch. The issue gets closed. The user gets a visa. The user gets notified. Right? So the, the idea is to be able to do this in a, you know, end-to-end -end fashion as a life cycle as opposed to bits and pieces in a reactive fashion triggered by users, right? Um, so that's where all of this comes together. Um, any, any questions, any comments or thoughts until, I know I went through a lot of content, uh, any questions before, before we go on to the next segment? Okay. Uh, you, you can save your questions for future too. So at the end of the day, it's about delivering an end-to-end -end proactive service resolution for your customers, right? So you want to reduce your MTTR, you want to auto-resolve incidents, right? So you want to get into the self-healing state where all of this works together um, and the end user is happy and your IT, IT as a team is, is able to serve and meet the SLAs that's required for the organization. So that's really the intention, and this is how you can see all of this coming together, right? You can discover, you can monitor, service, and remediate, and deliver that experience. So oh, with that, I want to have, well, I want to welcome uh, Trung from Videotron to come and share his story of how they are leveraging our suite of solutions to drive optimization for the organization. Trung? Pleasure to have you. So <clears throat> before I talk to, to you guys about how uh, the INO team changed the game on Videotron, I'm going to talk a bit about what's Videotron. So we're a telecom uh, provider that have um, uh, TV, internet, mobile, and house phone. We're around, we sell for over three billions, uh, 7,000 uh, employees. Um, and we have uh, over 2 million customers. We launched uh, lately our IPTV, that's name, the same name actually than the product, Elix, very popular name. So let's start. <laughs> so we start the journey at about 2016 when I came to Videotron. Videotron was doing already very good without me. Okay? <laughs> and that, that, that's, all starts there. Okay? So incident management, very good, but jet employee satisfaction, great job. Had some d d challenges in IT partner satisfaction, end user experience, and innovation. Sales were going up for about seven years. So with my luck, I was a bit scared that it was going to go less good. And then they're going to ask me to do something that all CFO ask you guys. If some doesn't ask you guys, tell me where, I'll go work there, okay? <laughs> so this is what they ask. Do more with less, faster. I was so scared that I asked my team to do it before I got asked to do that. So now we had good discussion, trying why are you bothering us? We were doing so well. And they showed me how they work. They showed me the math. And I told them, look, I trust your work. I trust your math but I'm looking for something else. So then the budget start cutting, right? CFO start acting on it. 
So then they asked me, so Trang, what's your plan now? So my plan is usually the teams, what they do when the, the budget are more difficult, is they, they take the screwdriver and they tighten up and protect the operations. It's very important to protect the operations. They cut a bit of projects and they forget about the innovation. Okay? Us, what we did is the opposite of it. Okay? That's why we came with Game Changer, because you have to change something. We brought a Game Changer, we make the project, and we change the operation. That's how we did it. Okay? To make sure that we are at the same place in the presentation, just want to make sure, are you guys thinking that this is going to be a very hard journey, and this guy in the front is crazy? <laughs> good, good. We're, we're at the right place. <laughs> Trying to make sure. So what did we start doing is innovation initiative with all our wives. What's an innovation? It's something we didn't do. Maybe you guys did, but we did it not do a video track. We have to change our mindset to change the way of doing and use the right technology, which is BMC. It can be from 5,000 to X million. It doesn't matter as long as you're doing something. Okay. So these are some of the innovation we did, all of them with ROI. But to achieve greatness, we needed something to connect all this. Minimum of synchronization. I wanted something that if Muksov says something, Nutanix can react on. So this is when BMC technology came in. Okay? They help us doing that without humans. So now, we have some challenges there as well, because we have a small team to manage the tools and have a lot of challenges already. So how are they going to do to connect all of these innovation that we don't know about? So the team is about 11 people. Okay? There's two ways of seeing this. You can see that you don't have enough people, or you can see something else, like this. So this is my team, <laughs> the Justice Leagues. Okay? My tool team is Batman. They always have the right tool, okay, which is BMC tool. They're 11. So how are we going to do this? So I believe that if we work well with BMC, which are the Avengers right here, you guys are 6,000 people at BMC. So in my eyes, my team FTEs is 6,011. <laughs> So this is how we did it. It's the only way to do it. First, is this even more crazy than the slide before? <laughs> Probably is, right? So how did we do it with BMC? Because they, they, even though we took out one of the tools, they came to help us. So the Montreal team worked with us days and night. We share our goals, multiple workshops, about mindset, HR, financial, we showed everything. Even HR. We did workshop weekly, monthly, status on uh, quarterly, yearly, to make sure we're aligned, because we need discipline in it, okay? Then we, we start attempting conferences, EBC, R&D workshop, we prioritize orchestration, automation, and uh, analytics for end user experience and time to market, very important. We focus on the CMDB because we couldn't go further than what we went with automation, orchestration, if we didn't have the CMDB, okay? And every day, what we do is we challenge our status quo and we challenge even our best practices. I tell best practices, whatever best practices, we challenge them to achieve our goals. Now, had a great crazy idea, had a good plan, well executed. So probably you guys are asking, but do you have some KPIs to show us? That, that works, right? I'm going to show you right away. So the, our result, our projects in CapEx year after year went down from 50%, 13%. Optimizing our CapEx budget. In the OPEX project, OPEX, operational, 10%, 14%.
where we got our money, it's in innovation. So CFO was calling me to ask me, John, do you have more ideas? I told him maybe I should take this because no CFO is calling somebody to spend money, <laughs> right? So I taped him and I replay it to him all the time. <laughs> so now we always think that when you bring in some new stuff, we create more incident. But it shows that minutes are going down by 4% the, the first year and 60% the second year because innovation is kicking in. Okay? It's the only way if you want to break your circle, you have to do this. And then we went to come to benchmark ourselves with Gartner because maybe I'm really crazy. So let's check with Gartner. So for distributed infrastructure, Windows, database, whatever, Unix, we're beating the market from 1.5 times to 4.1 times because we have orchestration behind it. For end user support, Bidding for 1.5 to uh, 3.2 because we have chatbot, we have uh, orchestration in the user password, we have everything we needed, we, we bought. And legacy infrastructure, mainframe, be better of 4.2. Okay? For the orchestration, I'm very proud of these stats. We're 88% faster time to market. So, whatever we were doing manually, now we're doing. Uh, orchestrator. Even the idle process, we do orchestration of it. And we did 26 innovation since 2017. So I'm ready to uh, have more questions. Uh, I don't know if... Yeah, yeah, open it up for questions. Perfect. Any questions, folks, to Trung or any of the Helix? You need. Is that on? It's not on. <coughs> Why don't you ask the question? I'll repeat it. Oh, okay. Uh, I was just wondering an example of an innovation. And I want to make sure I'm using the same terminology. I was just wondering what, what are a couple of examples of the innovations that, of those 26 that deployed the So. These are the, 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 the innovation that, I couldn't put the 26 on the slide, but we basically try everything. Everything that we think it as an ROI, we tried. Okay, so it's just deploying, okay, I got it. Exactly. Exactly, if, you, if you're waiting for the good timing, the good, the good money, and the good plan, you will never do it. Doesn't work, right? I don't know, it's probably me. <laughs> you can try. <laughs> oh, that works, okay. That's the wrong way. This is better. How about that? Is that better? Very good, very yeah. good. Okay. C can you turn it to the ROI slide? Because what impresses me is that very often, ROI, ROIs are required in order to move forward with a project, but then companies rarely follow up and actually do the, the measurements afterwards to, to show that that ROI was actually obtained. And it sounds like that's what you've done here. Is this a, a good example of hard or soft dollar cost? So are these real dollars that were saved, or are these just dollars that would have been saved uh, as a result? You know what I'm, do you, you understand what I'm asking I, there? I, absolutely. So this is not cost avoidance. This is, this is not cost avoidance. This is cost savings. Cost avoidance, the business case is even better. And you can, you can continue to, to, to monitor this cost on an ongoing basis, is Absolutely. That right? Okay. Absolutely. And uh, at the end of the year, I don't have the, the innovation process here, but we have it at Vidotron. 
at the end of the year, I come back and with the CFO and tell him, look, cost optimization, cost saving here, 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 cost avoidance here, here, here. And can you give me some examples of what some of the cost avoidance would be? Is this, you know, fewer calls to the service desk? As, yeah. as a result, we don't need to have as many people, so we've saved money because <coughs> we've cut a few jobs. So, actually, the first year, usually the CIO, CFO, they allow me to do cost avoidance. But what you're just saying now, it's cost saving that we did. We did cost avoidance, like productivity, right? Office 365, right? There's a lot of cost avoidance here. But everything that touches the infrastructure and service desk and uh, maintenance contract was all cost savings. Perfect. Any more questions? So I have a question for myself. Can I say it? <laughs> Let's see what you have Perfect. to say. So who in their right mind would let me do this? Right? Maybe you guys are not the same, but I can tell you that my sea level, they love ROI. I'm pretty sure your C-level, they do the same. So that's how I sell it. And we have to, you have to do small innovation and fast. That's the key. If you do a big project, five years, five million a year, it's never gonna happen. Great, thanks, Trung. Yeah, we have a question. Hey, Trung, uh, just on the topic of ROIs, could you comment on how um, implicated the BMC team was uh, helping your team develop solid business cases. Absolutely. So each time that BMC came with an idea to us how we should do it to optimize, I always ask him, what do you see in the market? What's the ROI? BMC, they show us their, num their numbers, and then we did it accordingly to that. We build our business case. Savings are not always the same, but there's always savings. Great. If you don't have any questions, Strong will be around. Um, and please do stay around. I think after this session, there are two separate tracks. There's the ITOM, ITOM track and then the service management track. So you will be switched <laughs> into reds and blues. Uh, but you know, depending on where you want to sit, please make sure to switch your seats because it's, it's going to be two separate channels. Um, but otherwise, uh, I'll be around as well, so stop by to ask any questions, but uh, I'll, I'll see you guys uh, for the next track soon. Thanks. Thank you.